Okay. So whenever you're ready, Doreen. All right. Well, it's 701 in the interest of everyone's time. We'll, we'll get started. Hopefully a couple others are able to join us. Um, so welcome everyone to the June 23rd, 2020 virtual library board meeting. Um, first item up on the agenda is public comment and I see no members of the public. Brooke, am I missing anything? Any write-ins, any phone-ins? No, we did not receive any write-ins by four o'clock and I checked it at six o'clock as well and we hadn't received any emails and comments. Okay. All right. Then seeing none, I will declare the public comment section closed. Um, any additions or changes to the agenda? I'm seeing shaking heads here, so we'll go with that. Um, this is going to move fairly quickly here. Um, I don't see Carolyn for the Friends of the Library. Any reports from them, Brooke? Um, not, no, they, they did give the money for the summer reading. Okay. I'm not aware how they did that. I wasn't invited to the meeting, but it happened. Something happened. I got a check, um, and I thank them. Right. And um, so that's been, you know, so they've been responsive when I have reached out. Right. Um, and we're not asking them for museum pass money at this time. Um, and that's because a lot of museums are not participating in the uh, library, mu library passes for the museums. Um, but we're trying to clarify that with each museum we're, we're associated with and then update our website accordingly because we don't want somebody to print off a pass and then them show up and it's just not accepted. So about right. I wouldn't say it's about 50-50, um, but people are really going to have to call ahead to find out what restrictions they're under. And some are extending the passes, you know, for a period of time. Um, and some, it's like it's not a problem. Um, and so, you know, I, we just don't want to ask for the money if things are kind of in flux for the museums at this point. So that's kind of all I know about the prints. We're still not accepting donations. Okay. At this time, um, maybe further into the future, as we have um, the general public start to enter in limited uh, limited numbers. Um, and here's George. I'm just going to admit him. Yeah. Um, and and maybe we can have volunteers at that time come in. Um, but they're kind of filled up anyway because they were within a month of the actual spring book sale so no, Brooke, hold on one second okay we we did not have anybody doing minutes here without george so okay let's hold on a second is he coming in he's been admitted but it looks like he's taking a moment to connect okay i mean it's pretty straightforward you know in terms of yeah. who's here all right Let's see here. All right. Okay. I see him. I don't see him on camera, but I see his name listed. George, can you hear us? Oh, he's connecting to audio. So we'll give him a moment. I apologize. It escaped me that we didn't have that in place, although I know we have this audio or this recording, but nevertheless. Have to love technology, right? I, I think the recording acts like the minutes. I feel like I heard that somewhere. It, it does, but it's best to do both no for yeah, sure yeah. but i just yeah i think i heard that said all right all right i have enough notes here okay i can create something okay um, you're talking about the museum passes for the friends of the library. Yeah. 
And um, yeah, so the museum passes, um, we're not gonna, we'll update our website of who's accepting what and when um, to the best of our knowledge, but that's gonna be a moving target um, as people have to, um, uh, as, as the museums themselves update what they're doing and accepting. A lot of them are doing timed entry because they're trying to control traffic right um, so yeah um okay. and then the the donations and the friends we'll just see how that kind of progresses okay all right sounds good all right i think you're going to give an update on kind of where things stand in your library director's report so so we'll we'll wait for that um amy bellow could not attend um so there is no town council liaison report um, there. So as far as my report, a few things. Um, some upcoming dates. The next finance committee meeting is Wednesday, July 8th at 5.30. Um, Andrew Salick from FIA will be in attendance to talk about second quarter performance. Um, it will be a virtual meeting. So Brooke, I'm assuming you'll send out um, info at that point. Yes. Or closer to that point. All right. So for those on the finance committee, if you could please um, tag that date and time, July 8th at 5.30. Um, all right, so, I, oh, there's George. Oh, you're on mute, George. Are you having? Probably, yes, a little difficulty, but here I am. <laughs> okay, great. So I can, I can show you some notes from what we've already talked about. I'm just on my report now. We didn't have any additions or changes to the agenda. And the next Couple finance things. committee meeting. Finance committee meeting. I'll give you a little bit on Friends of the Library that Brooke talked about. And Amy Bellow is not here. Okay. Um, so we started at 701. Okay. All right. So yes, finance committee, Wednesday, July 8th at 530 with Andrew Salek. Um, so wanted to, another date, the next board meeting is July 28th. Um, it's important to have a quorum because this, that meeting will talk about budget transfers. Um, Brooke was telling me earlier that finance is looking to have those wrapped up in time for the August 3rd town council meeting. As you recall, you know, we look at where we are from a budget standpoint and if we are underspent, which we have been um, in the past, you know, we look to potentially give funds back. We also look to put some into the library reserve account. Um, so that July 28th meeting would be critical in order for the board to determine what they're going to do and to vote on what they're going to do in order to make a recommendation to the council for August 3rd. So I know this is a, a crazy year and vacations aren't what they normally are, but, but nevertheless, it's still July. Um, so if you're not gonna be able to make that July 28th meeting, um, please, you know, give Brooke as much notice as possible because if there won't be a quorum, um, it will need to be rescheduled. So to kind of highlight that, I know it's summer, but highlight that date on your calendars, that would be much appreciated. Um, also wanted to highlight, um, I did see this in the, in the paper as well, but Brooke brought it to my attention. Um, Mary Gorman, who is a past library board chair as well as chair of the Friends, um, passed away on June 12th. She was 95 years old. Oh my goodness. Yep. God bless. So wanted to highlight that. Um, Brooke, I believe, you know, you knew her as well. Yes. Um, yeah. So yeah. a great library supporter up until, you know, pretty much very, very recently, right, Brooke? Yeah. And I, I hadn't seen her, I think, in the past year. Um, and I was kind of wondering how she was doing. Um, but yeah, she, uh, uh, did a tour, she, she did a tour with me and Mr. Wadwa, like three directors ago. Um, and he had not been back to the building since he retired. And so, so she toured him around and we had to bring Elaine because Elaine had worked here and, and toured us around. So it was really kind of interesting. And so, um, yeah, so it, it, she was part of a book club while she was here, and the book club was having more and more difficulty as they got older, just coming to the library, uh, but just a wonderful woman. Um, so, yeah, missed, will be missed. Very good. All right. Um, last thing is that this is my last meeting. 
Um, I have served three terms on the library board, um, nine years, three terms. Um, and, and, you know, for the bylaws, that those are the limits. So we certainly respect those bylaws. Um, I did want to say thank you to the board for the lovely flowers. I'm going to see if I can move this so I can show you. So I ask your indulgence for a moment. Oh, there oh yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> well deserved. <laughs> Mary, you're missing it. <laughs> yeah. They're beautiful the flowers. They beautiful. Just take our word for it. I take your word for it. <laughs> it convinced me a little bit this morning that, wait a minute, those are really for me. But um, thank you all from the library board. I appreciate it. They are very lovely and they have a, a certainly a, a place of prominence in my kitchen. So I, I certainly appreciate that. Um, as well as all my time on the board, I mean, at some point, um, it's been an eventful nine years, um, served with a lot of different board members. Um, you know, fortunate we've had a really stable group for the most part, especially the last few years. Um, honored to serve on the executive committee with Martha and George, um, and certainly hiring Brooke um, six years ago, Brooke. Yes, actually, I'm coming up on my six year anniversary. Wow. Almost six years. Um, so, yeah, so that's one of the most important things the board can do is hire a director and, um, you know, really proud of the fact that we, we accomplished that and it has worked out, you know, so well for all of us. So um, really grateful for that opportunity as well. So um, Martha will chair the July meeting um, and preside over the election of officers at that time. So you're stuck with me through June 30th at this point. Um, okay, and that was my chairman's report. Um, I just want to. I just want to say thank you, Doreen, for your leadership. You have. Um, you just have been an extraordinary leader for us. I, I've learned a lot from working with you. I. Um, you guided us through some interesting times, and um, you know, I. I appreciate that we've become friends through our, the library board. But I, I. I. I just. I don't think people understand how much goes on behind the scenes and and how much time you you put in and how much you know, how intricate your knowledge is of everything that we do and, and how um, you just have created such a collegial atmosphere here always and have gotten us, um, I mean, time after time, successful budgets, but obviously leading us through the hiring of, of Brooke, who's been such a wonderful asset for our whole community. And so you're, you're just going to be sorely missed, but we appreciate everything you've done. Yeah. I, I second you. all that. And also, of course, I want to thank Doreen in particular for letting me fill the temporary slot as uh, secretary. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought about that a couple of times, George. Yes, that, that was the original um, discussion, wasn't it? <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, George and Martha both. Um, all right, Brooke, library director's report. Okay, um, the library is primarily focused on two things right now. Uh, the first is summer reading, um, and it began on June, everything was June 15th. Um, uh, this year's theme is Imagine Your Story, and again, thanks to the friends of the Weatherfield Library for funding this. Uh, summer reading is for all ages. Um, the staff worked uh, with the schools to help promote this in the virtual environment. So many thanks to the Board of Ed for their, their help uh, with, uh, with that. Um, it's a good time to mention that we now have a new uh, staff member, uh, the teen librarian, her name is Sarah Briggs. She also started on June 15th because why not just do it all on one day? Um, and so we're very happy to have her on board. Um, and it's strange to do onboarding or orientation in this environment because we don't think she recognizes half the staff because everybody's in masks. So it's just, it's just odd um, environment. Um, we want to encourage the library board um, members, uh, you're strongly encouraged to sign up again and participate in the summer reading. And if your name isn't Doreen or George, I am talking about you. <laughs> say. Um, so uh, the second thing that the library is uh, focused on is fulfilling patron holds. Um, and so starting on Monday, June 15th, because 
let's just you know rip the bandaid off and get going. Uh, we are we reopened for the limited service of holds pickup only by appointment. Um, when the patron's hold is ready, the library contacts the patron and um, uh, schedules an appointment. During that conversation, when we're scheduling the appointment, we're explaining to them the pickup process and also what the expectations are of them wearing a mask and social distancing, um, for them not to really engage the staff in chit chat, um, that that conversation making the appointment is the time to do the chit chat <laughs> um, and not during pickup, um, that we're not doing other services at this time. Um, and we tried to time it with other libraries in the Central Connecticut Health District, which is Newington, Rocky Hill, and Berlin. They're doing curbside outside. Our curbside is inside. Um, and we also tried to coordinate with Town Hall as a complex that they started on June 15th with by appointments for their services. Um, and so, so far, so good. The process, however, is very labor intensive. The staff are working out different ways to hopefully streamline it. But we're backlogged by thousands of items. That doesn't mean thousands of phone calls, but it means hundreds of phone calls. And, um, but we're getting stuff out. Um, we are fulfilling the needs of the patrons, but to do it fast enough, we'd like to get to the point where we're doing it within fulfilling a request within 24 to 48 hours of the material we have in house. Um, we are not there yet, but we're, we're trying to get there as soon as we can. Um, the week of July 6th, um, we're looking to bring back some additional non-union part-time staff to help with part of this process, but it's unfortunate, it's too soon to bring them back into the mix yet. We're still bringing in our uh, full-time union staff or other part-time union staff who've been working primarily remotely. So we're trickling them in. And then after the 4th of July, we're trying to bring in a few more and it still won't be our full staff, um, but we are trying to bring back uh, slowly additional staff. So even Dan, who doesn't work um, in the summer for us, um, we're looking to have him work a couple days a week to take care of the door. Um, and so we're, we're excited about that because that frees up the staff from doing other things. But um, it's, it is what it is, um, and we're, we're doing the best we can, um, but patrons are very happy to hear that they can come in and get their materials. Um, and we are trying to prioritize uh, the summer reading materials for the children or for the teens, um, but, you know, we're also looking to get out, you know, Bolton's book, you know, too, so that just, you know, was available today. So we're also looking to get that out as well. Um, so th that's, that's, that's it for the foreseeable future. However, we are looking to add additional services, hopefully towards the end of July um, or the beginning of August. Um, there is no exact time frame for this, um, but plans are underway um, and have started to be implemented but I've received, you know, we've removed chairs from the public floor, but I'm still waiting to get um, a quote back from our contracted cleaners to find out what does it cost to have a midday porter come in and clean all the restrooms. Our staff is going to have to clean high touch surfaces, um, but what is that really, you know, that's going to be a staff member assigned to that, um, you know, to, you know, go hit all the, the high touch surfaces this hour or something like that. Um, and then the restrooms, at least we're trying to hit them at least a couple times a day, as opposed to just once a day. Um, so that, you know, we're, we're just waiting on that um, for information about that. Um, we have a few more things to plexiglass up. Um, we think we're doing pretty well with um, the accumulation of PPE. Um, and so we've been ordering from every single vendor um, and the town has been able to supply us with some as well. Um, so that's, that's what we're kind of, you know, working on. Um, the health district is very concerned about a second wave of COVID, um, and has urged caution and advised us to reopen very slowly. Um, because if we have to scale back again, that's going to kind of perhaps be a nightmare. <laughs> um, we have to take, the library's 
every place is unique, but libraries, we have to take in consideration the, um, the guidance that is given to libraries as well as the guidance given to retail. And so it's like, oh, look at this guidance. So we're looking at guidance from all these, these two primary sectors. Um, and then I'm checking with, um, you know, Charles Brown, the director of health at the Central Connecticut Health District. Does this make sense? This doesn't make sense to me. Why would it be this way? Um, so I, that's been very, very helpful. Um, and of course, the library world nationwide um, has, of course, come up with a realm project, because why not project this out and uh, sound like scientists? Um, and they, realm stands for reopening archives, libraries, and museums. Um, and it's a research partnership between OCLC, um, which is the catalog, Dewey Decimal, um, Interlibrary Loan Worldwide um, organization. Uh, the Institute of Museum and Library um, Services and Patel, um, where they're trying to create and distribute science-based um, information and recommended practices. And so we're also, as we get this information that's shared, you know, by these different library, national library organizations, we're also sharing it with Charles Brown um, so that he can kind of see and hear his perspective on this as well as helpful. Um, I'm attending the weekly um, emergency operations um, meetings uh, for the town. And last week, um, I did confirm with um, Charles that he would agree to walk through with me with the building to see if, if there's anything that we've missed as we're looking towards the next stage of reopening. Um, so hopefully, I haven't missed anything. I know in some reports that I read, I missed something on drinking fountains. So they were like, cut off the water to drinking fountain. And I was like, what? <laughs> I didn't know about that. So you, I, I'm picking up something new every time. And then you're checking, can we shut off the, you know, can we actually do this? Can we do this? And so it's working. And sometimes it's working with physical services of what we can, can we shut off the plumbing to it? I don't know. Um, so, uh, you know, every, every, every department in town has been very supportive. And I'm really uh, grateful uh, with uh, Charles uh, with this. It's been helpful. Um, so any questions, because I included more information, I think, uh, when I sent you a summary update um, a couple weeks ago, uh, but that's kind of what we're looking at. No date, no date, um, but we are trying to coordinate as much as possible. There are two libraries that I know of. Uh, Manchester has let people into the building, limited, no chairs, computer use is 15 minutes. Um, but they're, they're letting people actually further into the building and Windsor is as is doing the same as well. And those are the two in the area. I know East Hartford, they're not opening up any town buildings until after Labor Day. Um, you know, so it's kind of a, a mix, but I'm okay with Windsor and Manchester. Go test the waters and let us know how it goes is, is helpful. Um, but yeah, sometimes I'm walking through here and I'm like, I just want to open, you know, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. But they did give me, a, if I could just interject, Brooke did, did give me a brief tour um, of what's been done so far at the library. And it's, it is a little eerie in a way, um, you know, with all the chairs removed and, you know, things um, locked off. I mean, even, you know, folks coming in to pick up their, their, holds it, it is literally just to the part of the desk in front of the door and out because everything else is locked off so they can't go further into the library um so it's it is definitely you know different um than what we are used to but um you know we, we adjust with the times so um but kudos to brooke and, and the staff um and the town departments as well for assisting with that i mean it's to try to think of everything especially when we spent so much time trying to figure out how to get people together and get people to talk and, you know, work together. And now it's rolling all that back. Um, so, you know, kudos to, to them for doing that and spending the time doing that. It's very labor intensive and, and but it is what it is. I want to make it as safe as possible. Um, deliveries to the library. Um, the volume is picking up from the two delivery systems, the number of items. Um, so the, 
state library is delivering to us as well as our um, consortium. And there's more and more material coming in as people uh, are realizing, oh, I can return books to the library, but they're returning them, you know, at another location and they're coming in. So that uh, volume has picked up in the last couple of weeks. Um, the uh, fines, we're still waiving fines for the foreseeable future. I'll have to pick a date like September or, this, or January just to say fines are back, folks. Uh, but right now fines, we're just waiving whatever we can. Um, so our revenue will be down um, so it's for the town. Um, food uh, for fines, which we're supposed to do and we've been doing for years in the month of July. Um, it's a very important cause. However, we're already waiving fines. How do we get to collect? We're gonna try to make it a summer reading challenge for the kids that they could take a selfie. And I've gotta get like a, a, a garbage can or something on the front stoop um, that people can place their material there. So I was talking with Kathy Bagley about that and they're quarantining their items for a week. Um, so we would have to do the same. Um, I'm not sure how much we'll collect, you know, because we'll get 50, 60, 75 people a day picking up holes or, or something like that. Um, some days are not that many people. Um, but as we streamline the holds pickup process, but you know, people to donate. And if we make it a summer reading challenge, it'll give, you know, you could at least drop by the library and, you know, drop something. Um, so we'll just, we haven't worked out all the details, but we should be able to do that in the next couple of days. So we are excited about wanting to continue um, and, and just continue doing that. Um, the, I've already talked about the Friends of the Library, but our, um, so let me move on to technology. Um, I did meet with our Novus, our IT um, consultants, um, and they, I guess recently, not us, thankfully, um, but there have been some nonprofits that are clients of theirs that have been hit by security breaches. Um, and so they just kind of reviewed with me a checklist of things. Um, and some of it is just staff training that you learn not to click on something that looks kind of suspicious. Um, and and that, that's something we'll want to implement with the staff. Um, migrating us out of our current male client to a different one um, is, is part of that. Upgrading the remainder of the Windows 7 computers to Windows 10, um, you know, just things like that. So um, they're going to send me a checklist if there's an additional cost or not. Some of it is, some of it isn't. Um, but those are just really good practices. So they, they spoke with me and Luke, the technology librarian. Um, and so, cause I was a little concerned cause I was like, did something happen? And they were like, no, no, it wasn't you, but we're seeing this with other clients. And so that, it, you know, caused them a lot of concern that they reached out to all their clients and just go, this is what we kind of want to do best practices moving forward. And we're doing a lot of it already, but you, I, you can never be too safe. So that was good. It does help that I don't um, do uh, payment, that my payment process is through the finance department um, of town. So I know that Mike O'Neill that takes care of the, that stuff um, and, and, and keeps up to date with that kind of stuff as well on his end. Um, but the fact that I'm not actually processing a payroll, you know, that lends itself to a whole nother things that you'd have to make sure you were complying with um, uh, and best practices um, that you don't lose your payroll, you know, or pay the wrong vendor or something like that. So um, it's good. And, I, and even something like for our own finances, the fact that we have um, dual signatures are required to authorize, you know, a withdrawal with FI, those kind of things. So um, all good, all good. So um, glad to have met with Novus about that. Um, the, the staff, um, how they've been doing, we're slowly starting to bring them uh, working um, from, from home, to starting to bring them in. Right now they're two days a week, pretty soon we'll be to three days a week on site. Um, so everybody's trying to get reacclimated to themselves again. Um, and we have, um, and, and so that dynamic is happening. We're going to be bringing additional, some additional part-time non-union staff back into the mix. Um, you know, and that's kind of different. 
Um, the Stafford, you know, they're basically transitioning to a new working world, um, as everyone is. And um, it, it's an adjustment and certain things are being prioritized. So right now, like the holds pickup, it's like all hands on deck at this point um, to get that stuff, you know, prioritized. So they may have been working on a project that's important, but it's not as important as that. Um, and summer reading is being prioritized. So we're pulling back from some other things um, and prioritizing it. So people are doing tasks they may not have been used to. And we're just continuing to ask everybody to be as flexible as possible. Um, and, and, you know, so far so good, but it is, um, I, I think we're, we're kind of getting in the role. And I think, um, uh, some of the managers had some ideas to, you know, oh, we could streamline it this way and, and, and hopefully those kind of changes will work to the process that we've instituted, you know, in the last couple of weeks to improve it. Um, so, you know, that's kind of, you know, what we've been doing, but um, the reprioritizing is, is just a change for people and it's like, this is the priority, that, that's what we got to do. Um, and then the next big adjustment for the staff um, will be when we reopen further um, and how they're interacting with the public. Right now we see as people are approaching the door and we have masks that cover our face and we open the door and we have blue X's in spots that they can stand. They walk right past it because you're like, do you have an appointment? <laughs> What's your name? What time? You know, and all this and you're, but they can't hear you. Um, People are really used to reading people's lips to a certain extent and facial expressions and that is lost. Um, and so the staff are backing up, <laughs> um, but just trying to still be welcoming, um, but to keep everybody as safe as possible. And so um, just working through that. And when we reopen further, there's gonna be a lot more of that going on. And we're trying to figure out, is there a way for us to remote into people's computer if, if you know, of the eight machines I have, maybe I have four that can be used by the public to make sure everybody is maintaining social distancing. But when we're trying to help someone with a computer issue, you're like right next to them. And that dynamic really cannot take place. Um, and how do we help them but still keep everybody safe? Is it something that we can remote or we have them stand on, go stand six feet over there and I'll fix your problem. And you have to wear gloves and so, that's gonna be the next kind of struggle that we kind of have, or maybe the computers are just, they're, if you can't use it, we can't provide further assistance for you. It could be maybe the way to go. Um, but it's just, it's not how we wanna provide customer service. I can, it's just not comfortable and people just have to get used to it. Um, and so it's gonna be awkward and hopefully, you know, there'll be a miracle, there'll be a vaccine, it'll all magically go away, but I don't think for the foreseeable future that's going to be reality. So, um, you know, that's kind of where we are. So uh, the staff are, are adjusting. Uh, they're doing a really great job um, and it, it's been tough on them, um, but, you know, it's, it's scary. So, um, but I'm welcoming them back. Oh, I'm back. <laughs> so wear a mask. Um, I am taking their temperature at the door. Um, I wear goggles. I look ridiculous, um, you know, uh, but they're, they're doing a great job. So very pleased. Um, another staff, not our staff, but on the town side, um, the town, uh, the HR manager, uh, Stephanie Askland, um, is actually going to uh, be the HR manager of the town of Avon. Mm -hmm. um, so that is, uh, in my opinion, a loss for the town. Um, and I don't know plans of replacing that position. Um, it, it affects us because she does know more than me in human resources, <laughs> um, especially when it comes to like FMLA paperwork, um, which she was trying to train me on very quickly at the end. Um, but, uh, you know, her last day is, 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 is in the first couple weeks of July or something like that. So, um, but she did want me to pass along that she enjoyed working with you guys and um, enjoyed coming to the meetings and uh, thought you were a great group. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, I want, she be, wanted me to be sure that um, saying, you know, bye um, and to, you know, uh, 
wish you all the best. And she did enjoy working with you guys as a group. Um, yeah. Can you please also extend um, the same to her? We certainly appreciated her knowledge and expertise um, yeah. through a lot of um, the challenges we faced. Yeah. Um, so we appreciate the time she spent with us as well. Yeah, I will certainly do that. Um, I have, uh, can it, a lot of the town processes things I authorize, which is wonderful. So she got a lot of that infrastructure kind of in place um, and better, better streamlined than it already was. Um, and so, you know, I feel pretty comfortable that if, you know, there's something I don't know, I have uh, Ken Plum on speed dial, um, the town labor attorney, and that's really who I go to. So Stephanie was just, is really just for me, um, uh, like a wonderful sounding board. Um, and, and, but it doesn't necessarily impact the library as directly as it does on the town side. Um, but it was really nice to be able to just pass along uh, FMLA paperwork right to her. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, because um, that is onerous. Um, so, but yeah. So yeah, I will be sure to pass along. Uh, Thank you. Um, any questions so far? Okay, so the last thing I have is just the review of the library financials. I emailed everybody today. Um, and so you, uh, the showman and um, the library accounts with, held at Charles Schwab, um, they've gone up. Yay! Um, so at the, June, at the July meeting, we'll be looking to perhaps do a withdrawal just to get it out of there, because um, goodness knows how the markets go. Um, but it is, showman it is above 300,000, which is great. Um, so, you know, we, we've got that, um, and so they're, they're, they're starting to bounce back, and I think Andrew will have much better, you know, have great insight for us at the July 8th meeting, um, with the finance committee, um, so looking forward to that, um, and so, yeah, so there's that. Um, any questions about those two particular accounts? Okay, and so the next one is, is our... Let me just pull it out here, is actually just our current financial report um, in June. And so currently, or this is actually last week, it is missing this week's payroll plus six days worth of payroll, or actually more than six days. It's going to be about eight days worth of payroll or something like that. Um, so it's plus a few days. So there's a payroll and a half at least left to process out of this. And so if you look at the top, what will be, it says 88% spent out, but if you look at the top, um, employee benefits, that will be zeroed out, gone. Health insurance will be zeroed out, gone. So that's 75 grand that you could immediately take from 233. Um, and the rest of it, Defined contribution, they've already pulled out the pension. What's left is what goes into those employees, including myself, that what we get are 4.5%. There'll be a little bit of money left in that, but the remainder from copying and binding all the way to the bottom, there's, there, that's all, that's kind of accounted for. Um, there's really only $5,000 left <laughs> down there. So we are spending a little bit out of the salary line. Um, I've opened up a, uh, at the end of each year, we drop into overdrive about 10 or 12,000. And we've actually dropped $25,000 into overdrive of which we owe money on anyway for current invoices. Um, but that kind of will last us a period of time. In addition, I opened up, um, I dropped money, made a deposit with Hoopla, of which we, which was twenty nine thousand dollars, and six thousand of that is already accounted for with current invoicing, and so it's really only a drop of twenty four thousand. So I kind of doubled because there's so much going on in the online, you know, usage there. Um, I don't want to give the two vendors any more money at this time. <laughs> um, so according to my math will be between 50 and 100,000. And right now I want to say it's going to be 50 and 80,000 left over. 
Um, and so that's my best guesstimate right now because things get really crazy here at the end and we've approached that time. Um, you know, and, and we're buying up as much PPE as we think we're going to need for the foreseeable future, but I do have, you know, more money. So, and I, and I am expected to be underspent because I wasn't using a lot of my part-time staff and I didn't have a team librarian on board um, either. So this will probably tick up a few more percentage points. And then at the July 28th meeting, the, a couple days before that, I'll sit down with Mike O'Neill and go, what is the final number that the board is voting on? But I can tell you right now, the 60,000 in health insurance and the 15,000 in employee benefits are, are wiped out just immediately. Um, so my estimate right now is our balance is actually 104. <laughs> Um, and that doesn't include this week's payroll and the next payroll. So, and payroll has gone down because we're using, you know, less uh, people at this time. So any questions about this? Um, what we've ordered for PPE or plexiglass or any of that, where, um, it gets tagged, just so that you're aware, it does get tagged for COVID reimbursement from FEMA. Um, and that it wouldn't come back to the library as a department, but it would come back to the town. And I think sometimes they can get up to 75% reimbursement, um, which is great. So they're, they've been documenting that from the get-go. So me and Elaine, when I'm signing off on payment, we're like, was this a COVID purchase, you know, kind of thing. I mean, I, I do buy late, you know, I do buy gloves but I don't buy boxes worth, <laughs> I, you know, so um, I do buy hand sanitizer, but not gallons, you know, so that kind of stuff. So um, we've been putting that in and Mike O'Neill at some point will authorize to try to get the money from FEMA and I hope they do. hope they're able to. Um, any other questions about any of this? Okay, so that's that's all I that's all I really have, other than to say, Doreen, you have been on the board. You've a, a very strong advocate. You've hired a director, for better or worse. <laughs> for better. I hope for better. I hope for better. Um, you uh, un under under. During this time, there's been a new investment uh, firm that's been hired. Um, a handful of policies have been revised. This is the year we're supposed to be doing policies, and this is the year we're doing PPE instead. Um, and uh, a new strategic plan. Were you with the other strategic plan? I don't think so. I did okay. not. Okay, that might have been 2010. That was, I think, oh. 2010. Yeah. yeah. I think I just uh, missed that one. Yeah. Uh, a new website, rebranding. The board has been busy under you. Most so, definitely. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it, it's absolutely great. Uh, one of the last conversations with my dad was about you. Oh. And in November, I was like, She's leaving. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad goes, how long has she been doing this? I'm like, I don't know, nine, 10 years, something. And he goes, it's just, he it was really good, Brooke. It's been a long time for Doreen. And I'm like, but she has been volunteering since the age of 15 <laughs> at the Historical Society. She told yep. me this. And he was like, stop. <laughs> it's okay, Doreen is rotating. <laughs> so it was actually just a really great conversation I had. One of the last ones I had with my dad was about Doreen. <laughs> so, yes, you will be missed. No. Well, that's very nice. I'm glad, glad to hear that. I never got to meet your dad, but I heard, certainly heard a lot about him. So um, thank you for that. And yeah, it's been, it's been a while, but it's been certainly, and we won't go into how many years it's been. Yes, since age 15, but we'll just leave it at that at this point. It's all the same to everybody else. For the thank minutes, should, shouldn't I have <laughs> We need an accurate accounting. Like, this is accounting. a long time you yes, can like, <laughs> put the pen down. Or, the, or not, not 
That'd be good. Thank you. The audio went on. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But no, it's been a pleasure. And, you know, of course, if there's ever, ever anything I can do on behalf of the library, I'd be more than happy to do it. Um, you know, just, you know where to find me? Not far. I'm just down the street, Brooke. I'll probably reserve a couple of books yeah. and, you know, do my socializing over the phone before I pick them up and all that. Stuff. <laughs> I'll follow the rules. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. Anything oh, thank you. Else? No, thank you, Brooke. Thank you. Thank all. you. Anything else? Thank you. Anybody? All right. Then seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? <laughs> second. All second. right. Yeah. Who's, who did the second? I'm second? Lori. George, Lori did it. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned. All right. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Doreen. Thank you. Doreen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. I'm excited to come back as we were here. <laughs>